All righty. It is Sunday morning. I hope you guys had a good uh, spring break. Uh, I know I did. Uh, so we're going to get this last uh, uh, free response uh, question worked out here. So this is free response number five. Um, this is the one that's going to include uh, such uh, exciting topics as uh, rotation and gravitation. And uh, here we have a picture of what looks like an inclined plane and some sort of round object sitting at the top. Uh, they give you an angle and a side, so I guess we know we can figure out all the other sides if necessary. The uh, text says a 250 gram snowball of radius 4 centimeters. I'm already upset. Grams and centimeters, I'm going to have to convert those in my head real quick. Um, starts from rest at the top of the peak of a roof and rolls down a section angled at 30 degrees to the horizontal. It then reaches a flat section of roof. Okay, so we're going to be including this flat section of roof here. Uh, that is 2 meters lower than the peak. Okay, that's what that is and is partially covered in snow as shown above. Well, uh, the snow is not depicted here. I suppose if I wanted to, I could make little hashy marks under here to remind me that this is going to be a, a frictiony area there. Okay, so the first thing it asks you to do um, is uh, A, <clears throat> on the dot below, which represents the snowball, draw and label the forces, not components. Okay, so We'll continue reading. Each force must be represented by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the dot. The force must start at the point on which it is exerted. The dashed line represents the roof. So this is really not a free body diagram where the dot would have no extent to it. Uh, this is an extended body diagram. Um, I, would, I would draw right on here, um, and I might just. Um, but no, let's, uh, let's do the solution. Um, on a separate sheet here. So this is a uh, unit 5 FRQ. And um, we're going for part A here. Oh, and let's, uh, let's transcribe some of this important information. Um, the mass, uh, excuse me, the mass of the snowball is 0.25 kilograms. That's changed. The radius of the snowball is... 0.04 meters. There is a two meter drop. Uh, it is at 30 degrees. Uh, what other information was on there? I think that's all the other information. Oh, an initial velocity was zero. Okay, so part A, we're going to draw an extended body diagram. Now, a free, this just for fun, a free body diagram here, an extended body diagram there. Uh, let's draw the dotted line for the roof line. Okay, so the free body diagram would be really simple. There would be a normal force um, that's going to go ahead and go that way. There would be some sort of weight. And they didn't say that this roof was frictionless. There's going to be some friction. Now, the difference between a free body diagram and an extended body diagram is what does that friction do? But let's go ahead and finish the extended body diagram. The normal force is exerted at the point of contact through the center line of the snowball. So that means it's not going to have any torque. The friction is exerted at the bottom and it is parallel to the roof line and the weight is exerted at the center of mass. And this is where we, if you zoom in on this picture right here, you can see where a twisting type of force is going to come from. Neither the normal force nor the weight are going to twist the snowball, but the friction is acting at the outer edge. So the snowball will rotate around its center of mass. Um, so there's the uh, answer to that part. And then we need to go to part B. Which of the forces shown in part A produces a torque on the snowball as it rolls about its center? Justify your selection. Okay, so we did just discuss this. And we'll go ahead and do part B. Part B, uh, only F creates a torque. Now we should probably say why the other ones don't. Um, the other two are acting through the center of mass. So that's the answer to part B. So we've got an answer and a justification. So the only thing that's going to make this thing spin. By the way, there is another school of thought, and I don't recommend it, but another school of thought is that the axis of rotation is here, where the friction and the normal work and the mg is causing the spin because it's away from that point. But it's so much easier to deal with things rotating around their own centers of mass than it is rotating around some point on the outside edge. So I don't recommend that school of thought. 
Okay, let's look at part C, because we're chugging along here. Calculate the linear acceleration of the snowball as it rolls down the inclined section of the roof. Okay, so you might be tempted to think that we can go back and just use the uh, free body diagram to figure this out, but that is, that is not the case. Um, this thing is going to roll down and it is going to start spinning. And, and, and we've done this from an energy perspective when we realize that some of the potential energy that the thing starts with goes into translational motion, some of it goes into rotation, and those two are related. Uh, so we really just have to solve the crap out of this. Um, I suppose we could try using energy, but I think it's best just to do the official uh, F net equals M times A and simultaneously torque net equals I times alpha. And we're solving this simultaneous system of equations for the linear motion and the rotation. And because this is rolling without slipping, we're going to go ahead and be able to um, uh, e equate or relate uh, alpha and A. Okay, this one's pretty easy. The net force in the downwards direction is mg sine of 30 degrees minus F, and that's going to equal M times A. Now, friction, we know how to talk about friction. Actually, we aren't given a coefficient of friction, so maybe I'm going to leave this as F. I'm not going to expand it out as mu times a normal or anything like that. I think if we have to do that, we'll figure it out later. Um, so then this one, the next step is to say the net torque, which is the frictional force times the radius of the uh, snowball equals I. Now this is a snowball, so the moment of inertia of a snowball is two-fifths mR squared. And then we have here alpha, which is A divided by R. And if you don't know that uh, alpha is A divided by R, um, you need to review that and make sure that's on your notes. Um, there's some cancellation that happens here. We cancel the square with this R, and then we cancel the R's on both sides. So this becomes F equals 2 fifths M A. And that's a really easy thing to substitute back in here. So now we're left with Mg sine theta minus 2 fifths M A equals MA. And uh, the natural thing to do here would be to cancel all of the M's. So we've got G sine theta minus 2 fifths A equals A. Let's get the A terms together. So G sine theta equals, now we're taking a negative 2 fifths A to the other side as a positive 2 fifths. So that's a 1A plus a 2 fifths A is going to be 7 fifths A, oh, or A times 7 fifths. Um, that's really not the way I would like to write that. Um, so I guess that means that A is equal to, okay, here we go, 5G sine 30 degrees over 7. And uh, we can actually get a number for that. Uh, let me pause this for a second. got to go grab my calculator. Okay, like magic, the calculator appears in my hand, and we need 5 times 9.8 times sine of 30 degrees divided by 7. Oh, whoa, whoa, problem. Let's parentheses that 30 degrees. Let's get that answer, and then let's divide that by 7. I was worried that maybe it would divide the 30 by 7. I never trust these things with the order of operations. And that is a ridiculous number I've got here. Um, something must have happened. Uh-huh. 5 times 9.8 equals times sine of 30 degrees equals and divided by 7 equals... Oh, much better. Okay, so this is turning out to be 3.5 uh, meters per second squared. Okay, we got the answer to part C where we've calculated linear acceleration of snowballs that rolls down the inclined section. D, using conservation of energy. Oh, thank you for that, telling us what to do. Calculate the angular speed of the snowball as it reaches the end of the inclined section of the roof. Angular speed. Ooh, okay. Um, you know, uh, I think they had to say using conservation of energy because you could conceivably continue on using the equations of motion and this acceleration to find the... Um, linear velocity and then turn that into an angular velocity, but they want you to do it a different way. So um, 
let's go ahead and use uh, conservation of energy to do this uh, thing. And in fact, part D is really just the shape race we did in class. So what we have is that the potential energy is going to turn into a combination of translational plus rotational uh, kinetic energy by the time you get to the bottom. The potential energy is m times g times h. The translational kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. And the rotational kinetic energy is 1 half i omega squared. And now we're going to substitute in um, stuff we can. Let's see, we're looking for omega here. This is interesting. So um, I'm going to put in what I is, and I'm going to substitute um, for V, I'm going to substitute in some stuff that has omega. So this is going to be MGH still. This is going to be one half of M, and now V is really R times omega. So we're going to have R squared omega squared plus one half, and now the um, moment of inertia is two-fifths M r squared, and then that's omega squared. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Simplification-wise, we can go through and cancel out all the m's. We can combine the one-half and the, and the two-fifths, so we're going to wind up with gh equals um, r squared omega squared over 2 plus um, r squared omega squared over 5. Uh, so that's going to be r squared omega squared times one half plus one fifth. So that's five tenths plus two tenths, or r squared omega squared times seven tenths. Okay, what does that mean? Let's get this stuff all over to the other side. So ten sevenths gh over r squared is going to be equal to omega squared. Thus, omega is going to be the square root of 10gh over 7r squared. And we can put that in our calculator as well. OK, 10 times 9.8. I'm doing that for those of you who like that. Times 2 divided by 7 and divided by 0.04 quantity squared. And then we take a square root of that action. And we get 132.2. I'm just going to round that off to 132 radians per second. And that's going to be my answer for part D. Wow, we're kicking butt now. So it looks like all there is left is a part E. Ah, yes, here we go. A second snowball with the same radius that is packed so it is more dense than the original rolls down the same roof. Will the angular speed at the end of the incline for the new snowball be greater than, less than, or equal to the original snowball. Okay, so what are we doing here? We're making it more dense, but we're having the same radius. That means that what we're really doing is we're driving up the mass, but the radius is the same. So let's look back at our, our calculation here, uh, because they want to know if the angular speed at the end of the incline is going to be uh, more or less or stay the same. So what, what happens here if we increase the mass? Well, I would like to draw your attention to this line right here. That um, this line means the mass cancels out. Now, what about the radius? Well, the radius stays the same, and the radius is indeed in here. So it looks like omega is going to be the same because mass cancels out. Um, maybe you need to say something about the increase in density, but the same radius meaning an increased mass. Maybe you need to add those words. I don't think so. I think this is sufficient. OK, so that is the answer um, to 5. I thought 5 was very simple. Let's talk for a moment about scoring on number 5. And I, I think I've done scoring for the other ones. If not, you can ask me during our, our class periods. Um, and there'll be a word about that in a second. Here's the scoring thing for this. Uh, for this problem, uh, there were three points for the extended body diagram, one for each force that was listed. For part B, there was um, two points, one for the answer that friction causes a torque, and the second point for any discussion that, that talks about why the others don't or why uh, friction does. Part C was worth five points, and that's because if you look at it, 
it's um, it's a system of two equations, two unknowns, quite a bit of algebra. There's a lot of work that goes into this section. This is the main meat of solving it. So they gave you five points for that. They broke it down as one point for Newton's second law in the linear fashion, one point for Newton's second law in the torque fashion, um, including friction. Um, I don't know what the middle point, their description of what the middle point was is kind of nebulous. And then uh, one point for the answer. So maybe it's one point for the algebra that leads to a correct numerical answer. That's probably how they broke it down. Part D was worth three points. Again, Part D has also got a fair amount of algebra. You have to know how to set it up, but it is conservation of energy, which is a simpler um, concept and, and something that uh, the student is expected to have done more often. So you get one point for writing down conservation of energy, one point for knowing the moment of inertia of a sphere. Notice they didn't give you the moment of inertia of a sphere. So when you're setting up your work area and your formula sheets and stuff, make sure you have the moments of inertia of, of, of simple uh, shapes handy. And then one for the substitution where you got rid of um, V in favor of omega. And part three uh, was worth, two, I'm sorry, part E was worth two points. Um, one for saying it was the same answer and one point for the discussion mentioning that the mass cancels out. So uh, the fifth problem was actually a fairly simple one. Um, I know that you won't be solving this many problems on the, on the day, uh, but if they allow you during testing to jump back and forth, um, Remember that the last question is the one that most people will not have a full amount of time for. And if it is an easy one, and you can capture all the points on the last question um, without, you know, totally hampering yourself on an earlier question, um, you know, you got to maximize where you're getting your points from. You want to ride that partial credit express. Um, okay, let me take a moment uh, to do some uh, finger puppetry here. Um, uh, we're going to do something a little weird in the next uh, coming weeks. Um, I have this week to find out exactly what they're talking about, but the uh, district level administration is trying to standardize what different teachers are doing, and they'd like to go period by period um, for our um, meetings that we have, whether we switch to Zoom or or um, <clears throat> or stick with the um, Adobe Connect. Um, so you'll go, everything happens between about 10 in the morning and noon, and you'll go to your first period class and second period class on Mondays, third period class, fourth period class on Tuesdays, and fifth period and sixth period on Wednesdays, zero and seventh if you have them on Thursdays and Fridays, a pure office hours day. Um, from my perspective, you know, I'm going to continue putting out the, the videos. I'm going to start adding other things. And, um, uh, but, but uh, my, from my perspective, the office hours were not productive uh, on the many days that nobody showed up and I stared at an empty screen for an hour. Um, that doesn't seem a good use of my time and it doesn't seem like um, it's effective. And they're, they're saying we're going to do more of that. We're going to, fact, we're going to schedule that. Um, so I hope to, uh, to see some of you in the, uh, in the other uh, times. Maybe we can just uh, uh, crack jokes and have discussions. That'd be, that'd be fine too. Um what can I say? Um, as far as work goes, I'll be putting out on Monday, that's tomorrow, I'll be putting out a thing um, indicating what people are going to be able to do to uh, improve their their grade if they need to. Um, <clears throat> um, largely, uh, things are pretty much set in stone as of uh, March 13th when we stopped going to school. Um, but uh, I know that a lot of people were intending on improving their grade and particularly in the AP classes. So um, um, I will offer something that you can do. Um, so we'll talk more about that later. Anyway, enjoy the video.